Day. These are the general guidelines of the Bright Side 2020. Number 1. Be on time. Be on board 10 minutes before the scheduled time. Choose a suitable place where you feel active. Use headphones or earphones. Students who will participate in the session must be respectful in the comment section. A certificate of participation or e-certificate will be given after each webinar. This is a complete course for you that observes the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Any act against a person's rights like video recording without due consent is a violation of this law. Hello, our dear participants. We will hold a photo contest. These are the guidelines. In the photo opportunity segment of the program, the participants are hereby granted time to take a picture or selfie while watching the webinar. They will be given a hashtag which they will use in the caption upon uploading the pictures to keep the posts on track. Number 3. The photos with the highest likes or reacts shall receive a prize from the organizers. Here is the hashtag. Kindly note down and enjoy.
Good afternoon, everyone. We will begin our program in a few minutes. First, let us keep in mind some few reminders for this afternoon's webinar. Good day! These are the general guidelines of the Bright Side 2020. Number 1. Be on time. Be on board 10 minutes before the scheduled time. Choose a suitable place where you feel active. Use headphones or earphones. Students who will participate in the session must be respectful in the comment section. A certificate of participation or e-certificate will be given after each webinar. This is a complete course for you that observes the Data Privacy Act of 2012, any act against a person's rights like video recording without due consent is a violation of this law. Hello, our dear participants. We will hold a photo contest. These are the guidelines. In the photo opportunity segment of the program, the participants are hereby granted time to take a picture or selfie while watching the webinar. They will be given a hashtag which they will use in the caption upon uploading the pictures to keep the posts on track. Number 3. The photos with the highest likes or reacts shall receive a prize from the organizers. Here is the hashtag. Kindly note down and enjoy! Good afternoon, professors and future educators. Welcome to the afternoon session of our webinar series. I know that you are all excited to learn more after our meaningful and inspiring session with Dr. Joy Talents with her topic, Social Emotional Learning in a Flexible Classroom. Now, get ready for we are on for another thrilling ride full of learning and new experience. I am Janina G. Gatdula of De La Salipa, your host for this afternoon's session. It is an honor to welcome you once again in this webinar series brought to you by the first ever collaboration of De La Salipa's Educators Circle and the Batanga State University's Teacher Education Student Council. Welcome to The Bright Side. Unleashing Possibilities Through the New Normal Education. To formally begin our program, let us seek for the guidance and blessing of our Almighty Father with a prayer to be led by Geraldine Family Gutan of De La Salipa. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, our Father, all great and full of graciousness, as we are here in the heart of your safety, we thank you for everything. We ask that you strengthen us to send us your Holy Spirit to inspire us, to benefit from these experiences. By the speaker and all of us. We pray for the success of this webinar. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Geraldine, for that heartwarming prayer. The present COVID-19 pandemic challenged the field of education 
to deliver quality education amidst the situation we are in. With the goal to continue education, we are introduced to modified forms of online learning with the goal to facilitate student learning activities. Online learning might be in terms of synchronous, real-time lectures and time-based assessments, or asynchronous, delayed time activities and time-independent assessments. However, I know that this has been very challenging to all of us. This is why I am so excited with this afternoon's topic, and of course, our speaker. I know that we are all eager to meet our second speaker for today, so let us not waste any more time. May we call on Ms. Christine Rosales of the Batangas State University to introduce us to our second speaker for today. Our next speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Biological Science at St. Bridget College. And he took his postgraduate studies at Batangas State University, Master of Arts in Education, Science Teaching Graduate. And a Doctor of Education, major in Educational Management at the same university. Currently, he is an instructor and a co-chairperson of the undergraduate program of College of Teacher Education at Batangas State University, PB Main 1. He is also affiliated with some organization, including Philippine Association for Teachers and Educators, Incorporated, the Abbott Circle International Center for Communication Studies. He facilitated activities, including 2017 Year and International Research Conference, partnering and engaging educators and students across discipline through research output dissemination at Queen Margaret Hotel, Lucena City, December 14, 16, 2017, and Learning Express Lex Batangas at Bat State U PB Main 1 on March 12 to 23, 2018. And to discuss about e-classroom netiquettes and tips to avoid distractions, here is Dr. Rolda D. Achenza. Thank you, Christine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we all have been waiting for. Let us all welcome Dr. Raldan Atienza. Good afternoon to each and every one of you present in this webinar. So first, I'm very thankful for that very generous and very humble introduction of myself. And for this afternoon, let me first express my deepest appreciation and thanks to, of course, to the Batanya State University College of Teacher Education and at the same time, the Della Salipa, in particular to the DLSL's Educator Circle and the uh, Bat State UCTE's Teacher Education Student Council for the privilege to be part of your The Bright Side webinar, Unleashing Possibilities Through the Normal Education. And for this afternoon, I'd like to welcome you all in the webinar particularly that focuses on the e-classroom netiquette and tips to avoid distractions. Again, your facilitator, your resource speaker, my name is Rodan Diakenza, okay? So I challenge all of you to sit back, relax, and I hope to hear meaningful, insightful interaction later in the open forum part, okay? So let me proceed to the discussion, okay? So for, for the information of everyone, it has always been my dream 
to share the platform to all future teachers like me. Okay? It has been my long dream in life. And now that I was given the chance to to own this particular opportunity, I will seize this opportunity. Okay? So we are now, as mentioned a while ago, we are living at uh, in the pandemic period in the new normal in education. That's the reason why it's very timely that we will be dealing with e-classroom netiquette and I will be sharing with you tips to avoid distractions. Because as I know, you being new in the in in this mode or setup, there are distractions that prevent you from giving your best. Okay? And not only that, we will not just be going to different distractions, but more or less, I will give you I will give you tips and pieces of advice, okay, how you will stay on track and how you will be able to be an effective listener, an effective student. Okay. When we talk of netiquette, okay, so as you can see there, different um, taken from the different references like the Oxford Dictionary, the techterms.com, Merriam Webster, and then the Britannica.com, each of them give us concrete and specific definition of what netiquette is all about. Okay, according to Oxford Dictionary, that refers to the correct or the acceptable way of communicating on the internet. You might ask, you may, you might ask yourself now that you would like to know the correct and then the acceptable way of communication. Because you might wonder, is this really a correct way of communicating in the internet? Right? Now that we are into the virtual mode of learning, this session will help you become a responsible online user. And at the same time, I will help you in, in going on with the journey, okay, as we deal more on the virtual learning. While techterms.com, it says that internet etiquette is the code of polite behavior in society or a good behavior on the internet. So you might ask yourself now, am I good enough in, in projecting myself in front of the computer, in front of the gadget? Am I too polite in terms of correlating with my colleagues, with my classmates, as well as my teachers or professors? All right. For Miriam Webster, etiquette is the governing communication on the internet. It's the holistic process, right? And when we talk of netiquette, etiquette, yeah, netiquette, uh, th this refers to a collaboration of all the values, of all the skills, and everyone else that will help you out, okay? While Britannica.com, this refers to the guidelines for courses communication in the online learning environment. As we all know, at the end of the day, you just have to be your best. You just have to be yourself, project yourself freely, comfortably, right? And in order for you to learn something from your teachers, you have to concentrate. You have to focus. You have to give your 100% attention. And as much as possible, we will avoid distractions. But then, I know it's very difficult. Why? In the online learning, in the virtual learning, you are all there, right? You're seated in your own houses, right? I know all of you would agree, would agree to that statement. There's no particular, there's no physical classroom. There's no particular physical teacher that is speaking in front of you. But then again, it's your responsibility. You are soon to be teachers, and therefore, you have to be responsible. You have to be true to the good values that you would want to impart to your students in the future. 
We have the saying, you cannot give what you do not have. Therefore, you have to make sure that everything that everything that you will be sharing to your students must be reflected on you. And that's the essence of this webinar. That's the essence of this part. I'll be giving you lots of things, lots of strategies on how to deal with the online environment. That, that you would say that even you are there at home, even you are walking along the street, whether you are riding on a jeepney, and then you are just attending your classes, well, that's fine, okay? That's how flexible this online learning is in the in the context of pandemic period but no one is no one can afford to sacrifice the quality of teaching no word no one is no one could afford to sacrifice the quality of instruction now let me give you gentle reminders that will help you keep on track okay so first be on time you often heard that phrase you have to be on time you have to be punctual unlike the physical ones that you have to leave your house as early as 5 a.m or 6 a.m because you have that 7 a.m class during this time you are just there at home but then you have to be on time if your class will start at 7 in the morning Please, students, challenge yourself to wake up early and then meet the course requirements if 7 a.m. Okay, just like this one, it says there, punctuality is essential in today's online meetings. I know you would all agree into that. It would also help you if you have the calendar up or that will help you set reminders 15 minutes ahead of time. The challenge there is how you keep on time. And, and not only that, if your class is 7 a.m., of course, by that time, it is expected that you have attended all to your personal needs. Okay? Not that you will be waking up as early as 6.50, then your class is 7. I don't know, how would you be able to make that? Okay, dear teachers, dear future teachers, please be on time. And that, uh, actually, people, it's not only you who find this condition very challenging. Because even us, all your professors, we, say, we, we experience the same concern. Remember, we are at the same boat, right? So whatever you feel, whatever adjustment that you are doing, we, we have hurdled these adjustments on our end also as your teachers therefore if we keep on telling you to attend our 7 a.m class we have to be on time as well right and on your case it's very true it's a good way of preparing you in the future two three years from now you will be a professional teacher so train yourself to be on time okay and it pays to arrive at the right time it pays to be responsible in meeting all your professional engagements if you are on time whether in personal whether it is professional you always have to challenge yourself to be on time as for me it is good that you are the one there on the google meeting for example and please you can't afford to to keep your students waiting for you, okay? So please, dear teachers, dear future teachers, keep that in mind to be on time, okay? So later on, if you have questions, clarifications, all that and more will be dealt at the right time later, okay? Next is wear proper attire, of course. Why? Because I, I don't know, I, I don't know if you can if you can afford attending your classes at your at your simple sando shirt while you are in your shorts. Right? I, I I don't know. But then the idea is you have to present yourself 
uh, of course, professionally and at the same time, responsibly. Yeah, dress your dress up smartly and intelligently. Remember, your teachers are are looking at you virtually. Therefore, we would want to see you at your best attires always. It's not that we are requiring you to wear your, your uniform, nor your PE uniform. It's not the case, right? But what we ask of you is that whenever you attend our classes, please, please present yourself smartly, diligently, and of course, you are teachers, but you are soon to be teachers. Therefore, you have applied necessary necessary accessories. If it will help, then please do. Okay? You must dress in a way that is modest, clean, and avoid any unnecessary distraction. Right. This attire should support your day's goals and engagement. So keep that in mind. Wear proper attire. Let's go to the third. Consider a good stay, or when I say consider a good stay, choose the right location. As students plan for online lessons, it will be important to think through an ideal location. The most important thing is to have a clean and non destructive background. That's true, right? Whether you are in your bedroom, at the kitchen, at your, at the lobby, whether you are at the field, I, I could experience that. I, I have this, I have this student, they were used to climbing a tree just to have a good signal. Just make sure you are safe and sound, right? It's, it, it's good. If you have a good working environment at home, well, that's already a bonus. But then you have to know, not all of us, not all your classmates are gifted, could experience that premium in life, right? But then, whether you have a good internet connection, whether you just have that limited source of internet through your phone's data, please maximize your engagement. And it says there, consider a good stay, choose and be selective with your location. Select the place that is convenient, that is free from distractions, and at the same time, that place that is supportive of your learning, right? I know you have been taught of the idea that as teachers, we have to make sure that the learning environment is conducive. And how do you characterize conducive environment? Huh. You would be telling me, good lighting, right? The presence of infrastructures, that could also be one. Present of presence of instructional materials. But then when you are at home, how do you how do you deal with that? Of course, choose part of the house that you are secured, that you are focused, that you can give your hundred percent attention in the online learning. Okay? And then as much as possible, I, I know some of you might have experienced this while you are seriously attending and then all of a sudden when your your microphone is on when you were reciting to your teacher then one of the family members would tell you they will even shout they will even call your name and they will ask you pakikuha mo nga nung halimbawa diyan diba right so so you would have in mind if i could if i could silence if i could silence all members in the house right and you would also ask yourself if there is only a particular application that could that would mute everyone that is everyone or anything around your working environment it would help right but then you are there you are learning while you are at home so please and in in the course of this online discussion online mode of learning you have to inform also all members of the house that at this time, from 7 to 11.30 a.m., 
you are attending classes. And therefore, they would be made informed. They would not, as much as possible, they will not distract you, nor they will not be knocking on your door, right? They will not even ask you something, right? So it's a matter of communication. Present them. Present to your parents. Present to your siblings that during this time you have your your online classroom. So please, some used to have theirs on their doors. Online classes ongoing. Silence, please. Well, you just have to be creative. Okay? It depends on your strategy. Okay? Next. Also, part of the netiquette, right, is for you to take down notes. It will help, right? Of course, it says there it will be beneficial to jot down a note on the instructions that the teacher is sharing. Of course. I think some of you might have difficulty in learning nor getting into that one and a half hour period because of your connection, your internet, by even the service providers, you could have asked your classmates because your classmates have that notes. Therefore, whether you were able to attend or not, you can still get into that requirement. For example, so in the online mode of learning, no one is expected not to jot down notes. Still, it's a mass. Okay? So you write down important things, important reminders, important concepts that your teachers are telling you. You don't simply depend on them that you will just simply ask them, Ma'am, will you be giving us the handout? It's a different thing. Okay? And as students, it is your responsibility. Challenge sa atin yun, right? That whenever your teachers are discussing you with something, you focus listening, di ba? You, uh, you, you give your 100% attention. And then, so, I, I mean, at the end of the day, when you are preparing for the midterm or the final examination, you have your handouts. You would have your notes where you can get, you where you can review Diba? where you can check, write, and then verify the concepts that your teachers have shared in the class. Next. Yeah. Give your full focus attention. It says there, just be attentive. Be attentive. It means a lot. Right? In the world where there are full of distractions, how do you manage to be attentive? Right? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Come on, tell me your experiences. It says there, when you give your full and focused attention, it is also the same way of showing respect to the important learning process that you are engaged in during the meeting so if your teachers are speaking then focus then concentrate and then after your teachers have discussed something then whenever the teacher asks you do you have clarifications do you have questions that's your time to speak up unmute your microphone Express your feelings. Give your affirmations. If there are something that confused your minds, tell your teachers. People, you have to remember, it is your teacher's responsibility to impart learning to the students. So whenever you have confusions in mind, please ask your teachers. Your classmates will not help you. Much more if you're if the one whom you ask clarifications from do not also have the same interpretation of the concept that is being discussed. It's dangerous. That's what I always tell to my students. And then as teachers, 
That's why we always encourage you to speak up, right? We kept on telling you, do you have questions? Are there clarifications? Even virtual mode of learning, we kept on telling you these things, right? So how do you respond? Oh, nothing. Some would just have, some would just have encoded there. No, no questions, sir. No questions, ma'am. No clarifications. But then, if we are to build in, in the physical setup, I would know if you are 100% really listening to what your teacher is telling you or not. But this time, it's different. I cannot really check whether you are at home, whether you are there attending in the Google meeting, if your attention really is there or not. Whether your camera is on, whether you are there, unmute, mute, I'm sorry, whether you are muted, I, I don't know, I can tell if you are there really or not. So what do we do? Your teachers, we strategized. And what strategy are we doing? What? We used to call all our students for virtual recitation also. That is for us to check First, if you are there. Second, if you learned something from the discussion. Third, if you get into the competency that is expected of you to learn in the meeting. Future, future teachers, please know that it's very challenging. Now that we have this pandemic, it's too challenging for us all to elicit effective instruction. For us to have quality output quality outcomes we can't see you clearly right not even all of you are giving responses then you would be telling us sir i cannot answer sir i cannot attend due to these reasons a lot of reasons we always understand this part of being a teacher that we extend consideration, we extend understanding, we extend our generosity and heart for the students. You also have to understand, you also have to consider your teachers in a way. That means to say, our relationship should be mutual, right? And that's true. You will learn from us, we will learn from you, we will learn from one another when we collaborate. And this platform that we have now this afternoon, this is a good opportunity to widen your, your influence, your, to widen your perspective in meeting other future educators someday. So you have to see, make your presence felt by everyone, okay? So I challenge you if you have questions, uh, just encode there in the chat box, and we will do our best to answer all your questions. Okay? It says there, give your full focused attention. We always ask of you that. Okay? Next. That's it. Participate fully. If I'm going to ask you, how does it feel? When, how does it feel participating in the online mode of learning? Are you enthusiastic enough? Or, or, or what? Tell me, how do you participate? Or do you simply allow your classmates to be the same people, to just be sharing, just to be participating all, for, I, I mean, for the entire course? Very few are the ones participating. While you are just simply there, you're there in the Google meeting, but how do you participate? Do you, how do you interact? Participating fully means you pay close attention to be sure that you understand, you write anything down that you don't want to forget, and you are ready to ask questions. That's what I kept on telling you a while ago. Right? That's part of the teaching and then the learning process. It's not always the teachers who would be speaking all, all the time. I know you're aware in the 21st century learning, 
right? The cameras are within the students, are on. You are in the spotlight. You are the ones that we are developing. Therefore, you are expected to be creative. You would be learning how to communicate in both languages effectively. You, are, you would become a good problem solvers. You would become a critical thinkers. Right? If you can all be creative, if you all can be critical thinkers, if you all will, if you all can become creative, then the profession, the teaching profession, will be more successful, and we will all be leading towards excellence. That's what we dream of our students. We dream our students to become successful. If you're successful, your teachers are also successful. If you are failure, we are also failures. That's the truth. So it's a must, people, that you have to establish a good working communication. For you to be successful, clarify each of the elements here in your mind. If you are confused, ask. That's what we expect our students to be nowadays, to be more inquisitive. Uh, let me ask you, do you still manage to ask questions to your teachers? I, I think it's very seldom. In, in this online mode of learning, very seldom that I think not all of the students are asking questions. Because typically, with this mode of learning, students are just receivers of information, receivers of learning. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. What I am trying to say here is please participate. And of course, your participation will not only be by simply telling your concerns to the teachers. If you are afraid to speak up, if you are not that confident, although at the end of the day, you are expected to complete the program. Confidently, you are able to meet your students fluently also. But then, if you are afraid, come on, given that fact, and go type in the chat box your questions, your concerns, and then ask your teachers. We will address all your queries, all your questions. Okay? And also, my dear students, please. Have an open mind. That, that, that when we talk of open-mindedness, you are free to be corrected. You are open to be corrected. You are open for criticisms. At the end of the four-year course, it will not mean that you know everything. That you are already successful. There will always be rooms for improvement. Not all will be given to you. Not all is given to all of us. Even as your teachers, we also commit mistakes. But in the profession where we are all in, we have to be mindful. We have to be extra keen and sensitive. That on the eyes of our students, we are, we should, and we will always be their role models. Role models in words, in actions, in decision making, and in everything. How we look at things, how we look at people, how we look at the students, how we look at the difficulty that, the, that this life is throwing at you. We manage to inspire our students. We always have to show our beautiful smile to the world. Even though you are, at, you are in pain, you are interrupted, whether you are not at peace, but then when you face your students, you forget 
the entire world because you have that one goal, one mission to fulfill, and that is to to show inspiration and to keep the students alive in the profession. Okay. I I also would like to thank you for choosing education as your course. Thanks God, there will be many people who would help us improve the quality of the Philippine education. There's no particular subject in the college, in the course, that will tell you what will you do, how will you deal with laziness, how will you deal with, with those students who are misbehaving. There's no particular lesson that will tell you everything that you have to be done. It's still your, your, your perception. And sometimes your perception is dependent to how you are being honed and developed in your pre-service education. That's why your college, your college level, this is critical. Critical in a way that all our strategies, all our teaching styles, chances are this may become emulated. You will just be doing what we are doing at present. Take note. You have chosen to become an elementary teacher or a junior or senior high school teacher. If some of you would be given the chance to be part of the tertiary education, well, good. We have that academic freedom. But if you would like to stick to the profession, but if you'd like to stick to the program that you have chosen in elementary or junior or senior high school, you have to be confident. You have to be able to articulate everything you have in mind in transferring to the students. Okay? I always believe that if you would like your students to participate fully, to participate actively, please give them the opportunity that's true as teachers we always want our students to participate to interact but we have to ask ourselves also are we good enough in providing opportunities for the students to meet your target therefore we have to give you all the freedom present you all different styles that will elicit your participation if your students don't make it at first as teachers part of our responsibility is this please restate your question not all not all your students will get it at once therefore if you happen to encounter such incident rephrase the question or if not rephrasing Provide examples, provide situations, and these situations will lead your students to arriving at the right answer, okay? And then also, part of the participation is this, is this. You throw a question to be answered by one student, and then allow other group of students to react to the first student's answer. For them to exchange their ideas and their and then exchange their opinions and your goal your role is to facilitate the learning to help students in the generation of knowledge you often heard that in the k-12 curriculum teachers are just the facilitators that's ideally that's the role of teachers in the k-12 curriculum is it happening is it happening it's for you to answer. But if I'm going to look at that, at that situation, teachers, is that 100% fulfilling the task of just facilitating the lesson? Sometimes teachers are still the source of information, the source of knowledge. Okay? Where in fact, in K-12 curriculum, students are the ones to generate their learning through the different strategies through the different styles of the teachers okay do i still have 
some more. Okay? Okay. Right after participate fully, we're now here. Avoid domination in the discussion. What do we mean? It's okay for there to be a little bit of silence in an online class. You don't have to fill every void with a comment or a thought just because it comes to you. Sometimes you have to, to check also yourself. Am I too talkative in a way that sometimes you forgot to mute your microphone? That at times it caused destruction. And sometimes, if not verbally, by means of the chat messages, it is always you who point, point, and there. Give all your insights, your comments, your expressions. No one should be, no one should forget the fact that the online classroom should be manageable by all students and should be controlled by the teachers or by the instructors. We are good. We have this privilege. We have the platform of meeting online. Unlike those who don't have, who cannot access online, they will just simply uh, depend on the use of the module. I think that's too too difficult, and that that's too challenging. How could the students answer everything in the module, right? Even in the tertiary education, I think some of you. You could still have your modules, right? And therefore, the, the challenge is, how will you be able to answer the module if your teachers, if no one is giving you uh, something that will help you answer, the, that will help you in answering the module? So what will you do? You will just simply resort to online surfing, the internet. Then not all of you are aware that not all information taken from the internet are true and accurate. You have to be selective. You go to websites which you think are credible and will help you in coming up with sound and good resource. If not, you might be accused of different violations. Okay? And then, when getting your answer from the internet to avoid plagiarism, you restate what you've taken from the net. You've cited, you have to recognize the sources, okay, from where your presentation comes from. Okay? Avoid domination in the discussion. If it is your turn, speak. If it is your teacher's turn, Listen, if your teachers turn, if your teachers have asked you to explain, to express, to verbalize something, then go on. The idea is observe proper timing. Remember, in one and a half hour period, if, your, if one teacher has 40 students, your 40 students cannot be teachers all at the same time. Therefore, the idea is when one is speaking, listen. And then when your teachers are done in explaining, grab the opportunity. Explain. Ask, clarify. Okay? As, as I have mentioned a while ago, not all these 40 students can become teachers all at the same time in the context of one and a half hour period. You can't afford to be talking all together. No learning will happen. No learning will take place. In your, in your speech communication, you've learned that when one is speaking, the other listens. 
in the mode of communication, there will always be the sender, the receiver, and then the medium. And in order for us to establish sound and effective communication, listening is the key. Okay? You react based on what you hear, not based on how you interpret. You clarify based on the different perspectives mentioned in the course of the discussion. Okay? Some more. That's it. See? The presentation is, is related to one another. Part of the online work, I mean, online environment is for the students to ask questions. It's it's typical to ask, it's, I mean, it's very normal that your teachers, that even you, in your mini reporting, in your peer teaching, you would notice that if the questions are asked, who, when, what, and where, the general audience are all raising their hands, right? They know the answer. But the moment you've asked the why and then the how, you would wonder, you would ask also yourself, did I ask the right question? Why is it that no one would like to answer the question? Students, part of critical ability, part of the critical thinking skill that we develop among yourselves is the hearts the higher order thinking skill of a, of a person. This will be successful if we give you questions that will help you comprehend, that will help you process your learning. If you are able to correlate, to integrate one subject into another subject, into another subject, that's what we expect our students wide reader, and critical thinkers. In asking questions, you, you will always ask questions based on what you hear, based on what the teachers have taught you, right? For clarifications also. I think, sir, you've mentioned a while ago that the process is, like, may, may, we, may we hear some more of the explanation? Are you doing that? Good. Or if your teachers are, are done in explaining, then you would tell, sir, may I also express something? Sir, may I share my experiences? Then go on. Asking questions will always be part of the teaching and learning experience, a process. It's, it will not be a good sign if the audience will not give their responses. Your audience have to respond. And chances are their responses will come from you, will come from the manner how you discuss as teachers. Okay? It says there, it says here, connected to these thoughts on participation is the importance of asking questions during an online meeting if you are experiencing some confusion or have a question about something it's likely that someone else has that same question speak up and then part of the netiquette is this if you are asked then you will answer if you are not the person being asked please you will not respond Okay, especially in the chat box, for example. The person has typed there, the person whom she'd like to answer the question. As a, as a sign of respect, let that person answer the question. It's not you who will answer. In the first place, you are not, you are not the person being asked. Okay? 
And in asking questions, be more careful with your words. When moving communication to a new medium, we need to begin by being more careful than we would otherwise feel the need to be. Start into online meetings with a mindset of cautious learning. I, from the beginning, the moment I started my teaching profession, I always have in mind, I am not perfect. I am not the best teacher. I may not have the best students, but I tell them, I challenge them to express. I keep on telling them, I keep on encouraging them to speak up. Your, your effectiveness as teachers should be reflected to your students also. You cannot claim, personally, on my case, I cannot claim I am good, I am excellent if I will not be able to transfer learning to my students. Something is wrong. Okay? Be careful with your words. Teachers, sometimes we, we forget, we forgot to say thank you. We forgot to say please. May I request you to do this? May I request you to get this, to get this letter from, to give this phone to. These are basic. And sometimes everyone forgets the very basic. Okay? Be more careful with your words. Then you would ask, you don't want to be hurt. I, I think no one in this meeting would like to be hurt. Therefore, you have to think and reflect also that in dealing with other people, in communicating with them, we remind ourselves that we have to make sure that we will be using appropriate words. Okay? Just like the golden rule, right? If you wanted to be respected, then show that you are worthy of the respect that you are claiming. Okay? And then you, of course, part of the training is to be careful, to be cautious with words. Okay? Never think that it's just here online, it's just in the Google meeting, it's just in the Zoom. We value attitude. Okay? We value the formation of the heart as teachers also. Okay? And then also, part of the netiquette is for you to check your emails regularly as much as possible. Your teacher might send you an email about your assignments, instructions, and other links to online meeting. You always need to be updated. And then also, if not in the email, check regularly your group chats. Right? I think group chats are more accessible than the email. Okay? And then in accessing with the group chats, make sure that you respond whether you give thumbs up, right? And then you said, thank you, that's good, okay? The thing is, you keep updated by checking the email and at the same time by checking the, the group chats in the messenger, okay? And then, Part of that is you would also ask yourself tips to avoid distractions. As for me, distractions will always be there. 
whether I give you lots of tips, lots of strategies, people, come on. You will always feel distracted. There will always be something, somebody, or, or factors that will distract you. But here is the thing. Part of the discussion is tips to avoid distraction. I always believe to process your mind. It's how you set your mind. Proper mind setting. Today is Saturday. You know your target. You know that within the day, you have to attend two webinars. Then feed your mind with thoughts, something about the webinar. Do not entertain thoughts, ideas, or anything else that have no relationship with the webinars. Okay? Because as I give you lots of tips, pieces of advice, I cannot 100% be assured that you will, you will do this. But one thing for me is the most effective, and that is proper mind setting if you know that from monday to friday you have classes just like what we discussed a while ago focused set your mind i will not go into super to sm for example or into whatever leisure time from monday to friday i will be serious I will do my obligation and responsibility as students. It's how you stay focused and attentive. Okay? So for you to be for you to avoid distractions, as I always mentioned a while ago, know first your goal. What is your goal? So it's a matter of mind setting. And then, secondly, you go back to the very first time you step into the gate of your university or colleges. When was the last time you first asked for the admission form that you are taking education as a course? If this happens, keep that in mind that you have your goals and that is for four years you are expected to finish the course or the program it will not be extended just four years so you have your long-term goal right the manner how you will reach that long-term goal is dependent to your day-to-day -day experiences. I would like to finish education as a course. Therefore, I will study hard. I will make all my exams easier to pass. I will listen to what the teachers are telling me. I will be a good servant leader. I will participate in all the school and outside school activities. Everything falls into one idea. Proper mind setting. You're asking me to give you something that will help you avoid distraction? Proper mind setting is the answer. Okay? So you always, you ask yourself, I have this goal. I have to show the world that I can be a professional teacher. I can help future generation by being a good English teacher, by being a good elementary teacher, social studies teacher, mathematics teacher, Filipino teacher, and all learning areas. Show the world that you have what it takes to be a future educator. Just like the song of Betty Houston, right? What did, what did that song imply? 
I believe I believe in the children are our future. Teach them well and lead them the way. So you, it is in your hands, future teachers, that will light the way of your future students' lives someday. So ask yourself. So I'll, I'll believe in you this thought. Okay? Join me in making sure that you will be continuously working to inspire your students, to empower your students, and most importantly, to develop your students holistically. Not only academically, but involve the values and hearts of the students. This, you can acquire this when you read, when you read, when you read a lot. But the development of the heart allow your students to be given lots of trainings and practices that will help them become a good, better individual. That in the end, you would tell them that they, there will always be a chance for everyone to be at the best version of themselves okay so i think i'm done thank you very much for your for your attention for spending an hour with me to learn about netiquettes in the online classroom okay thank you Thank you, Dr. Ralden, for that very meaningful, inspiring, and informative topic that you have shared with us. Let us keep in mind Dr. Ralden's tips, such as being on time, for it pays to arrive at the right time. Wear proper attire that supports your day's goals. Look for an ideal location with a clean and non-distracting background. Take down notes. Give your full focused attention. Do not be shy to raise questions. However, be careful with your words. Participate fully and avoid domination in the discussion. Check your email regularly and be updated. And to avoid distractions, have a proper mindset. And a lot more significant insights that really motivates us as we face the new normal education. Now, we can proceed to the second part of our program, which is the open forum. If you have any questions and clarifications that you want to ask Dr. Ralden, this is your moment. Leave your questions on our comment box and I will read it for you. Like what Dr. Ralden told us, do not be shy to raise questions. If you are confused, ask. If there are things bothering at the back of your mind, ask. Maybe your questions are also the questions of some of our viewers, so speak up. Doc, we would like to ask you to please stand by as we wait for our viewers' questions. Sure. While waiting, take a look at the events that the Educators Circle and the Teacher Education Student Council has to offer. From the Teacher Education Student Council, we have the Donation Drive. Its title was already revised into Edunation Drive 2020, which aims to help the affected families of Typhoon, Raleigh, and Quinta. We are encouraging everyone to please donate and be part of this project. They accept cash and in-kind donations. Next is TED Talk which is an ongoing educational TikTok tutorial that aims to teach young minds and develop the professional qualities of future educators. With hashtag Halinat Magpatuto, it will rampage the platform with educational content. Come on and register now. Next. 
Planting on Vlog series is also an ongoing project of the Teacher Education Student Council. The vlogs to be submitted were eco-friendly. It aims to produce more plantitas and plantitas and help regain a clean and green environment. So, come on and join now. For the activities of the Educators Circle, we have Ihan Dog. Last January 2020, the world was shocked by the spread of coronavirus disease. Due to this, restrictions of movement remain in place, including for children who are generally not allowed outside their homes. To help the Department of Education, teachers, parents, and learners, the organization will gather school supplies, books, writing and reading materials to aid children from a selected school in learning, especially at this time of pandemic. You can drop off your, don your donations at the addresses flashed on your screens. Lastly is the ridiculous imagination. This is a virtual storytelling at the end of every month. It aims to provide children a meaningful and fun experience through storytelling that can strengthen each child's reading skills, vocabulary, comprehension, and imagination with English and Filipino. Furthermore, the activity will be streamed on various online platforms such as Facebook, Google Meet, and YouTube. Let me check, Doc, if we already have questions from our viewers. Sure. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it on the comment box. Ayan, we have our first question. Hello, Sir Roldan. Any tips po for students na maliit po ang attention span? Yung mga madali pong madistract. This is from Dieter Pass. Okay. Um, as I look into the question, I'm trying to process the, the intention of the question. Because first, there is a, an important responsibility of the teacher to sustain the attention of the students, okay? So the teachers should probably be aware of the attention span of the students. And therefore, if, for example, that student has a very limited attention span, the challenge lies more on the teachers. How will you have... How will you present the lesson more interestingly so that you will be able to cater the limited attention span of the students? That's coming on the end of the teachers. But on the end of the students, okay, um, span madaling madistract si students. Sabi ko nga kasi, it, ano eh, tips to avoid distractions. Proper mind setting talaga doon, Dieter. Okay? First, why? You know yourself better than your teachers do, right? So, halimbawa, hindi mo masyadong gusto yung subject. Kasi pwede isa yun sa mga dahilan. Okay? Your, inter your interest and inclination towards the subject. Sabi ko kanina, fill your minds with thoughts. Hindi yung, ang tagal naman mag 4pm, matatapos na din ang klase ni sir. Hindi yon, But then, you try to develop 
little by little, search what is good in the subject for you to be attentive. Gagawan mo ng paraan. You will dig the core of the subject or the course. Meaning to say, Miss Presenter, uh, Miss MC, I, I would like to help Dieter Pass to, to process the question by, by having two things. My responsibility is a teacher, and at the same time, since the relationship is mutual, students also have to play your responsibility well. Okay? So, parehas lang. May parehas tayong gagawa ng action. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Yan. We have our second question from Lisette Lapating. What would be the best way to avoid the distractions like in social media spot? Okay. If Facebook, kasi I believe you you like certain pages, di ba? Kaya nga, if you, if you have many liked uh, pages, time to time, it will appear in the timeline. And in the same way, that will become distractions. So una, to avoid distractions in social media, choose and be selective in following and in liking pages. Second, choose only relevant applications or social media accounts that will help you achieve your goal as a teacher. Okay? So, ikip mo lang doon yung mga apps na pwede mo magamit in the long run. Hindi na yung al alam mo, Miss ano, Miss Miss MC, as I look at Miss Lapatin question, we're coming from different generations eh. Kayo kasi yung ano, uh, you're more into technology, so kaya naiintindihan ko na marami kayong social media, marami kayong source of distractions other than me na iba din naman nga yung generation, mga 1990s kami, di ba? So ganun yes, lang. <laughs> Be selective in choosing social media platforms that you will be keeping in your account, in the, that you will be keeping in your phone. So in order for you to select, ano lang yung makakatulong sa'yo sa pag-aahal mo para hindi ka masyadong ma-distract. Okay? And then para hindi din totally distracted, ay di bypassing na lang Diretso na lang. Huwag mong, huwag mong pagbigyan ng much of your attention. Kasi pag, if you go into the details, ah, distracted ka. Okay? So, Miss Lizette, Lapating, so sana nakatulong. Piliin mo lang yung mga social media account that you will be keeping in your phone. Thank you so much, Doc. Talaga nga pong nasa mindset lang po natin okay. yan. <laughs> Ayan. We have our third question from Sofia Gra Gra Gracia Yvonne Ernie. Oh. Hello po, Sir Roldan. What effective strategies in teaching you can suggest to us? Madame, madame yan. I love that. I love that question. That question is best, uh, I mean, is best answered in all your professional education courses. Okay. Sana, Sophia, help me in praying that we end, we, we end already the pandemic period so that we can meet physically. Sophia is from that state view. We can give you lots of effective strategies na mas magandang maituro in actual over the online. Thank you, sir. Um, for our next question from Janelle Punong Bayan. Good afternoon, sir. As teachers and future teachers po, how and when should we approach those students who are showing improper netiquette po, considering those who are not aware of their actions po? I always believe in the idea that if it involves a lot of people, praise or affirm people in public, castigate them privately. Getting into your context, Miss Janelle, if you can PM, if you can send private, or if you can directly message that person, it will help. Yes, sir. Kailangan din po talaga nating maging 
empathetic and understanding na baka maka-hurt po tayo ng feelings yes. kung harap-harapan po natin siyang i-correct sa harap at, ng class. At saka, Miss Jenina, alam mo yun, kapag ka in public yung conversation, hahaba yung usapan at the same time, you are also opening gateways for other people to comment yung makidagdag din dun sa conversation, lalawak yung usapan natin. Yes po. Um, for our next question, Joanna Lin Cuenca from DLSL. Hello oh, po, okay. Doc. In your opinion po, how can a person effectively communicate with someone if he or she have trouble understanding what they are saying? Ah, possible ba yun? Is that possible? I, 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 I think, how can a person effectively communicate with, with someone if siya mismo ang nagkakaproblema dun sa kung paano niya naintindihan yung kanyang sinasabi, possibly ba yun? Is that really possible to happen? Kasi uh, kung sasagutin ko talaga yan, Miss Cuenca, Miss Jenina, first, I- I'd like the admission. Meron kang recognition that something is lacking within your capacity. Maganda yon na recognize mo na you are having difficulty in understanding with what you are saying. So, Jonalyn, Miss Jonalyn Cuenca, please double the effort. Double time. Kasi you are a teacher. It's a must that you understood what you are saying. Kasi kung hindi, how do you expect your students to be able to understand you in the first place? Thank you so much, Doc. For our next question, from Lisette Lapating, what if naman po, kapag po nag-participate po ako, bigla pong na-de-delay yung sinasabi ko? Any tips po? Nakakapanghina po kasi ng loob yung tipo na nakakatamad na pong sumagot sa susunod. Thank you po. Kasi it's not your problem, Miss Lisette, nor your teacher's problem. It's your mobile phone's internet connections provider's concern. Siya yung may problema doon. Uh, I, I think we just have to, from the beginning kasi of the SEM, you lay down your expectations. And sa case kasi namin, we surveyed our students who among them have limited access on the internet and who have uh, unlimited internet connection. And then by simply looking at the result, we found out that more, I mean, much of the students have very limited source of internet Therefore, we understood their situation. So ngayon, pag nag-respond ka dun sa sagot dun sa teacher, medyo nadidelay, tapos eh, parang napuputol, hindi, hindi ka agad kami basta-basta nagbibigay naman ng closure. Your teachers are giving you countless chances. So anak, Lizette, Miss Lizette, you try to instill that in your mind. Una, wala kang dapat ikapanghina ng kalooban. Why? It's good that you have something to share. Second, huwag ka din anak tatama din sa susunod na may nais kang sabihin. Okay? Kau din, grade mo nakasulalay din naman dyan, di ba? Kasi anak, kapag ka tinamad kang sumagot, alam mo yon little by little, that will help you not to have good interest towards the subject at mababawasan din yung ano mo. Yung, yung interest at yung, yung enthusiasm mo. Okay? Alam mo, Miss, ano, Miss Jeanine, ma-share ko lang. Kaya nga, ako sure ay though. tuloy-tuloy sa pagpasok. Alam mo ba, after college, nagpasok din ako ng MA, alam mo yun, kapag ka hindi ka nagpo-pursue ng postgraduate studies mo, parang you feel stagnant. May ganyan talaga akong feeling. Kaya, after 20, 2009, 2010, nag-MA ako, Tapos yung 2015, nakatapos. Pagkatapos nun, nag-doctorate na din. Ganon. What I'm trying to say here is, people, after graduation, after getting, achieving your baccalaureate degree, your world doesn't end there. Much more, it would open to many opportunities. It's a lifelong learning, okay? Some more questions. Ayan po. From Jeremel Manalo. Good afternoon, sir. How can we deal with lack of confidence to maximize participation in class? 
Ay, Ma'am Janina, you know what? I know Jeremel Manalo, siya ba yung estudyante ko? Social studies major. Una, hindi naman siya, hindi naman siya lack of confidence. Si, ano, confident naman yan si Jeremel na yan. Um, first, how will I say this? It's a collaboration. Sabi ko kanina dun sa discussion ko, di ba? Uh, you expect your students to be confident. So dapat as teachers, you too, from the very first place, are the ones confident also. And Jeremel Manalo, let me reiterate, you will be teachers. You will be a teacher years from now. May teacher ka bang hindi confident? Alam mo, alam mo, ma-share ko lang sa inyo lahat. Minsan nga, ano eh, daig pa nung overconfident yung may alam. Kasi yung overconfident, yung confident ka talaga sa sarili mo, when you project yourself in front of the students, you can easily, you can easily look at the eye of the students and they will fail. Alam na, alam ni sir ang topic niya. Pero ang totoo, struggling ka din dun sa concepts na tinuturo mo. Pero they will not notice that. Why? Kasi dominating yung confidence level mo as teacher. Okay? So, Mr. Jeremy Manalo, please, confidence is part. It's our sword also, being a teacher. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ayan po, meron pa po sure. tayo yung yes. questions. From Keep Angela May De Castro. Good afternoon, sir. How can we how can we react if the teacher is not entertaining our approach? Like you want to ask questions, but they don't recognize you. Kahit nakakailang approach na po. Thank you po. Ang sakit. It hurts, de ba, Miss De Castro? It hurts not to be heard, especially coming from your teachers. I don't know. I don't want to judge the teacher. Ano? Um, siguro may, may internet connection problem tayo, concern, kaya ganon. Kasi I, I don't think so if teachers would not be wanting to recognize questions coming from the students. Yun nga yung gusto namin eh. Diba? Yun yung gusto namin as teachers for our students to develop the ability to ask questions. And not simply asking questions, but asking relevant questions. Siguro, Ms. De Castro, you assess the quality of your question. First, is the question really aligned, suited, or appropriate to the ones being discussed? Kasi baka factor din yun. Ayan. From RJ and Rinal, talaga naman pong engaged na engage ang ating mga viewers. Kitang-kita po sa mga tanong nila. Good afternoon po, sir. Curious lang po ako on how you deal with those students na suddenly nagli-leave ng meeting whenever you raise questions to them. Then babalik if tapos na. Miss Janina, alam mo, I experienced that. Ako kasi <laughs> very understanding. Kasi you have to understand also the condition and then the situ- the condition and then the situation where your students are coming from. So na experience ko 'yan. For example, I asked them a question this particular student and then all of a sudden this particular student will di- will leave the group. Siyempre, my idea is, hindi naman niya intention na mag-leave the group. Maybe, struggling dun sa internet connection, meron kaming agreement. I will tell them, I always tell them, I told them from the beginning, that if this situation happens, they can type in the chat box their answer. And then, after that, I can go back to the chat box, I can easily give merit or points to that answer. So, credited pa din po. Your students, sir, are very lucky to have an understanding teacher. <laughs> Lahat kami, Ms. Janine, understanding. It's just that, siguro, for the sake of everyone here, uh, not all of us would have the same strategies, the same style in discipline and even classroom management. Ano? So, yes, gano, even twins naman, they are alike. Thank you po, sir. Do we have any more questions? Oh, oh keep coming. Keep all your questions <laughs> coming. Sabi dito, sana all daw. <laughs> <laughs> Sabi ni Arjoy. May hugot si Anna Joy. 
alam mo, Miss Janina, while waiting, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, di ba? Ganun ka-critical yung responsibility natin as teachers, especially kami na teachers nyo in your pre-service education. Kasi baka ang matandaan nyo, yung mga style lang namin, yung style din ng mga teachers nyo na, kasi let, let's all be honest, baka sabihin nyo, nagpabasa lang ng tukasa, nagpag-search na nagpag-search, nagpag-report na nagpag-report. Yun yung, yun yung, yun yung <laughs> natin na baka yun yung mak- Tanda at makwar mo na pagdating mo sa field, baka yun din yung ipapagawa mo. So lahat ng nandito sa meeting natin this afternoon, your teachers in the tertiary level, we have the academic freedom. Okay? And you can't tell your high school students, elementary pupils, that I can ask you for a report. No. Kasi basic ed yun. And then ang basic ed kasi, from kinder to senior high school, kailangan may guidance, may support si teacher. Okay? E tayo, tertiary. So kung gusto ni teacher magpa-report na magpa-report, magpabasa na magpabasa, that's part of the ano. As long as relevant and related doon sa course. Ayan. Thank you so much, sir. Talaga naman pong being a teacher is both an honor and a responsibility. Absolutely. Ayan, so- <laughs> Wala na po tayong questions, sir. Wala na, nakakabitin ka naman. Dinina. <laughs> Ayun po. Buhos po ang pasasalamat ng ating mga viewers for a very meaningful session. Thank you. Ayan. We can really see how engaged and eager our future educators to know more about e-classroom netiquette and tips to avoid distractions. Well, I can feel you guys. We really need this after all the experiences we had since the beginning of our online learning journey. Thank you, Doc, for imparting additional information and for answering the questions from our viewers. To all those who sent their questions, thank you very much. Tapos sa tayo, Miss Ano, may, nag- may nagtatanong pa dito. May nababasa pa akong dalawang... Ayan, meron pa po pala tayong humabol. Sige po, oh. sir, i-entertain na din po natin. Thank from you, from Miss Chubbles, Sir, ano pong masasabi niyo doon sa instructor na nakasando lang at jersey short habang nagtuturo? Um, PE, PE instructor? Pero kahit naman PE instructor, hindi, naka, ano, hindi nakasando at saka, naka-jersey shorts lang. Ano, so, ano masasabi? Anong, ang gusto ni Angelica Ferran, ano ang masasabi ko? Wala akong masasabi, Miss Angelica Ferran. Siguro, baka wala nang damit yung teacher. Ano? Pasensyahan, pagpasensyahan mo na anak, ha? Yan, from Darwin Clemeno. Good afternoon, sir. What advice po ang maibibigay niyo for those students na ang mindset na lang ng pag-attend ng klase nila ay para makapagpasa ng activities or malaman if may karagdagan pang gawain? I felt sad, Miss Janina. Miss Janina Darwin Clemeno is my student. He is mm. a third-year Filipino major student. Darwin, tonight, send me the names of those students. Ha? I felt sad. No, you have to erase that in your mind. You are here. You are completing the course requirements, not for the sake of anything else, but treat them as something that will help in improving your capacity as a teacher someday. Dapat yun ang mindset natin. Thank you, sir. If you still have questions and clarifications, I can see that the sir is really eager to answer your questions. Yeah, sir, P. Ipuyo, nakakadistract lang po. Ay, oo. Oh, oh. Alam mo, Miss Jeanine, tama tayo, P.E. Ano? Sabi niyo, nakakadistract daw. Eh di, anak, mukha na kung saan-saan natin eh. Ba't naman madidistract? Eh di, syempre, sa demonstration ng ano na lang, halimbawa, ay eh, dribbling. Ganon, di ba? Yun. Ayan. Yeah. 
Thank you po, sir. Well-informed po kami. God bless po. Thank you. Thank you so much po from Rizalin Ladlad. Do we still have questions, guys? Thank you po once again, sir, from RJ Endrinal. Okay, welcome, Mr. RJ and everyone else. Ayan, may nagtanong po ulit. From Pamela Baldovia. Based on your experience, sir, may pagkakataon po ba na nag-doubt kayo sa mga students na bigla pong nawawala kapag recitation na? Oo, meron. Mabilis yung sagot. Yes, may pagkakataon <laughs> talaga, anak, Miss, Miss Baldovia, na nag-doubt ako. Diba? Pero you always give your, your, your understanding to the students. Baka naman nga, again, eh, sabi ko nga, diba, mindset. And so, Ina-entertain ko pa rin yung idea na ay baka nawala ng load, nawala ng data. Ayaw ko masyadong isipin yung kaya nag-live kasi walang idea to answer the question. Pero kung yun man yun, ay di, sa sunod na tatawagin ko ang pangalan mo, sana may maikisagot ka na. Thank you, sir. From Rose Ann, thank you po, sir, for all the advice and lessons in this webinar. God bless po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From Angelica Felipe, thank you po, sir. Cute po ng talk. Relate na relate po ako. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do we okay. still have any questions? Parang poor affirmations na to, Ms. Janina. Ah, sige you. po, sir. I think this will be the end of our open forum. Thank you once again, Doc, for importing additional sure. information and for answering the questions from our viewers. To all those who sent their questions, thank you very much. We will now proceed with the awarding of certificate. Words are not enough to show how thankful we are with Dr. Ralden's presence today. It is an honor for me to present to you the Certificate of Appreciation for your meaningful and significant contribution to our webinar series. Allow me to read the citation. Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Dr. Ralden Atienza for sharing his time and effort in the De La Salipa Educators Circle and Batangas State University TB Main 1 Teacher Education Student Council's webinar series entitled The Bright Side, Unleashing Possibilities Through the New Normal Education on the topic e-classroom netiquette and tips to avoid distraction given this 21st day of November 2020 held via YouTube Live. Signed by Dr. Jennifer Casabuena, advisor of the Educators Circle, Dr. Ria Perez, advisor of the Teacher Education Student Council, Dr. Ivy Guse, Dean of the DLS Teas, Dr. Ruena Abrea, Dean of Batanga State University TB Main 1 CTE, and Mr. Welmer Adhar, the Director of the DLSL Student Services. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. To all our participants who want to join our photo contest, this is your opportunity. Take a selfie with us and post it online with our official hashtags. Yeah. Doc, can we request for your greatest smile for a photo opportunity? One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Once again, thank you to our valuable speaker, Dr. Rodan Atienza, for giving us knowledge and tips that we will carry with us as we go on our online learning journey. 
I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all of our participants for joining our webinar series, The Bright Side, Unleashing Possibilities Through the New Normal Education. I hope that this event made you see the silver lining in our current situation and be able to unleash possibilities for a better version of ourselves as a student and a future educator. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been day one of The Bright Side, Unleashing Possibilities Through the New Normal Education. See you next week. November 28, 2020, for another meaningful session. Registrations are still open, so what are you waiting for? Don't forget to evaluate this day's event and give us some comments and suggestions on how we can make our event better. We will be providing several links to avoid internet traffic that you can use to evaluate our program. Choose only one from the links presented on our screen and will also be posted on the comment box of our YouTube Live. A certificate will be automatically sent upon answering the evaluation form. On behalf of the Educator Circle and the Teacher Education Student Council, thank you and God bless. I am Janina G. Gattula, now signing off.